Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So Ron Barron, the legendary investor who's worth close to $3 billion, appeared on CNBC recently to talk about the market, the economy, the recent crash and rebound, and of course, Tesla. So in this video, I'm going to run through a few clips and add a bit of commentary where I think it's relevant. So without further ado, let's dive in. Hey guys, before I forget, Webull have a great offer for US residents. You can get a free stock just by opening an account with Webull using the link below. Get a second free stock by depositing $100. And if you're in the UK, Australia or New Zealand, Stake also have an offer of a free stock. Link in description. All right, let's get back to it. I know that you had been pretty optimistic about the, the market's eventual return. Um, but you were a little reluctant to come on air and talk about it. Why don't you talk about why you've been optimistic and then maybe why you weren't willing to say something a little sooner? Well, I wasn't willing to say something sooner because I didn't want to appear that I wasn't empathetic, that I didn't understand what was going on, uh, that so many people were enduring so much pain and suffering, and uh, I felt uncomfortable being optimistic in that kind of environment, and I am optimistic. So that was the problem I had. <laughs> oh man, I wish I had Ron's wisdom three months ago. Now look, I'm on the spectrum, so there is that. But I didn't realize, it just it didn't occur to me that letting everybody know that there was a huge investment opportunity presenting itself would come across as very insensitive at a time when there's all sorts of other chaos going on. So I got absolutely destroyed by a number of snowflakes when I'm saying, hey guys, I see a huge opportunity here. This has happened. Oh my God, how can you be saying that? That's so insensitive. The world's ending. Everyone's dying. You're, oh, oh my God, unsubscribed. I definitely learned this lesson the hard way in the last few months. So in the future, I'll be a little bit more mindful of how crazy people can get at the time. I'll still be happy to share my opportunities and things that I'm seeing, etc. But I'll be cognizant of the likely reaction, depending on how that information is presented. You're supposed to invest when times are bad. That was the premise of this. And in fact, uh, during my whole career, uh, that's been uh, the right way to go. When I started in 1968, uh, the Dow Jones was, uh, in 1969, the Dow was 1,000, uh, it's now 26, 27,000. The GDP of the country was 850 billion, it's now 21 and a half trillion, so it's up 20 some odd times, about 7% a year compounded. Uh, and in that period of time, there's been 9-11, there's been a financial crisis, there's been COVID, uh, there's been 1987 stock market crash, 1982, when I started Baron Capital, interest rates we're 17 or 18 percent a year, 17, 18 percent, and I'm starting a business coming into a recession. And so uh, this country has endured uh, wars. And, you know, Warren Buffett talks about this all the time, depressions, recessions, uh, you know, crises. And but every single one of them uh, that comes about uh, soon afterwards, we recover and we go down to new highs. And whenever they have these sort of events, what happens is the media uh, gives uh, you know great attention to uh, terrific investors, uh, and they all seem to come out and have negative views. I mean, it's amazing to me. They've been very, very successful, yet time after time, what they say is stocks are too risky in which to invest <clears throat> over and over again. And it's amazing, and uh, I don't understand exactly uh, how they have become so enormously successful, but they have. And so clearly, they've taken risk that they feel is inappropriate for others to take, or they think that by sounding negative, uh, that sounds smarter than if you just, you know, blithely roll along and think everything's fine. Well, I don't think things are fine. There's a lot of problems that we have and they have to be solved and they will be solved. And I'm not a politician or anything, but uh, as I said, 1969, uh, there were uh, uh, students in the streets about Vietnam uh, and uh, civil rights and we were about to enter a recession and stocks were going down. But again, the Dow Jones was a thousand and uh, is now 25 times higher and the, uh, uh, the economy is 21, 22, 23 times. So I think that what's next is going to be faster growth in the next period of time than has been before. Lots of fantastic insight there. I think the most poignant is Ron's perspective. COVID-19, world's ending, oh my gosh, like nothing ever like this before. What happened a decade ago? Global financial crisis caused by the housing bubble popping in the US. What happened a decade before that? Oh, that's right, it was a tech bubble in 2000. We can keep playing this game. The point is, these types of events are recurring. And rather than having an emotive response, Ron, because he's been through plenty of these, he's got perspective, very rational, calm, and logical, and reasonable, you just see the same thing happen again. Oh, here we go again. The media's just gonna report a bunch of negative stuff because that attracts attention, which means more advertising revenue. People are gonna panic. They're not gonna do their homework. They're gonna freak out. They're gonna sell their stocks. It's gonna present a buying opportunity. He's seen this enough times. Algorithmic trading has given people a chance to panic. Bear markets used to take a real long time because it took people a long time to uh, you know, absorb the news and then to react and sell. 
Now you can sell overnight. Of course, you don't get the price you want, but you can sell overnight quickly. Sell me everything. And they sell everything. And they drive prices to levels that are unbelievable. In the case of Schwab, for example, uh, they were telling me that the volumes that they saw in retail investors were three and a half to four times what they had been in November. Three and a half to four times. Uh, and, and, and he said, people are just selling everything or investors selling everything. They're selling stocks, they're selling bonds, they're selling gold, they're selling everything. And, and, uh, and to me, uh, that emotional reaction is something when you see everything on television, those emotional reactions give opportunity. I'm in total accord with Ron here. When you can tell people in the marketplace are acting irrationally, emotionally, illogically, they're panicking, they're scared, they're fearful, they're worrying, they're unsure, they're uncertain. This is an opportunity because if people are making decisions not based on evidence, data, reason, facts, but uncertainty, worry, concern, you know that they're not actually being reasonable. And in the short term, the markets can be irrational, they can be unreasonable. But over the long term, the market is rational. How about the old saying, Ron, no one ever went broke taking a profit. Sometimes it's just as hard to hang on or to buy more of something that's already tripled. That's the, that's the opposite of doing what the obvious thing is to do again. And, and I don't think anyone has done that better than you. You're, you probably aren't going to sell your Tesla even though it's over 900, are you? Um, I would like to be able to get more money to buy more Tesla, actually. In case you've forgotten, Ron Barron is worth close to $3 billion as a direct result of good investment decisions over the long term. And he's still a buyer of Tesla stock close to $1,000. I think that what's going to happen in that stock is that uh, they will, it's much, when people were selling it short for the past 10 years, and, uh, and the stock quadrupled, by the way, but for the first nine years, it, you know, it didn't change so much. It go up and go down. Uh, but there was a good reason why people were selling it short. Uh, the reason was that uh, it's very, very hard uh, to have to start a core company, almost impossible. So you wouldn't dream that it would be possible to go out there and hire 50,000 employees and design cars and raise the capital that you need and have a brand that everyone knows Tesla brand. My grandchildren, who are six and eight, eight years old, they know the Tesla brand. So basically, how is that with, and they haven't spent a dime on advertising. Uh, how can you uh, get a battery? They couldn't get batteries to go more than 100 miles on a charge uh, before Tesla comes along and now it's 400 miles and it will be way more than that ultimately and uh, at a reasonable cost. Uh, so when we started off, uh, I guess a few years before, it cost $100,000 for a battery. And then uh, it, it could go a reasonable distance, 200 miles. Uh, and, and then it cost 30,000. Now it's less than 10, probably you know, it's close to five before very long. And the cost of an internal combustion engine is you know, five or six or seven thousand dollars, and and uh, and a lot of places are going to ban them. There won't be any cars. But people didn't believe, and it, the only way you could possibly believe and to possibly come up with a good opinion uh, is to go do the research yourself. You can't rely on other people telling you uh, what to buy or what to sell. Yes, exactly, Ron. Exactly. I really wish people would get this. And like, I know there's a bunch of people watching this channel who, like, if I told them to go jump off the bridge, they probably would. Please think for yourself. Do your own homework. You need to be able to research so you've got a strong foundation upon which your thesis lies. If somebody's just told you this is a good idea or a good company or invest in this and you don't understand why, you can't go down from the leaves, down the trunk, all the way down to the roots. What are you doing? You need to have reasons for what you're doing, except in a few cases where it actually legitimately made sense. Most of the people selling in the recent panic weren't doing so because they had reasons. They were doing so because they had fear, emotions, uncertainty. Never smart. When you talk about uh, not ever going broke by taking a profit, of course you don't go broke if you take a profit. On the other hand, you never get rich taking a profit either because a good portion, portion of what you realize you have to pay in taxes. So, uh, and then you got to find something else that you like as well as what you already well, own and you know very well, so why would you do that? Damn Ron and his logic. I mean, keep a stock you think has got more growth potential in the future, even if it's gone up a lot? He's mad. I didn't start off to be a long-term investor. I became a long-term investor because of the disastrous mistakes I made by selling stocks uh, early or by not buying stocks. This is a pearl of wisdom many people have to learn for themselves, but thankfully I didn't. More than a decade ago, before I began investing initially in real estate, I actually met up with tons of investors and asked them all one important question. What is your biggest investing mistake? Almost unanimously, the response from just about everybody was, well, I sold this property when it had doubled or tripled, but now it's worth XYZ and I wish I'd kept it. 
the same story over and over and over. The biggest regret just about everyone I asked had, they sold an asset too soon. Not because they needed to, but because they wanted to take their profit because it had gone up a lot. And this was really eye-opening and I'm glad I actually asked these questions because from day one, I had a long-term perspective. I didn't want to be that guy saying, oh man, my biggest regret was because I sold X, Y, or Z. And so Netflix, we were investor in that when the market cap was $2 billion. $2 billion. It's now what, $200 billion? I don't know. Uh, and, and I didn't invest. You know, fortunately for me, some other guys in our office invested, but I didn't. And I became friendly with Reed. And, and uh, when one opportunity that I had, uh, the stock fell 30 or 40 percent. And, and I wasn't owning it. I had sold early. I had made my 30 or 40 percent and sold. And now the stock had gone a multiple of what I paid for it. And then it fell short because it had a pricing uh, issue. And when they made that, then, uh, then Reed called and said, Ron, this is your time. And I didn't even do that. And the stock went up who knows how much afterwards. And so, so I learned not to miss these things. And when I case have a, something like a Tesla, I told you a long time ago that you I did. thought that we would make 20 times our, mon our, our money in Tesla. So far, we've made four times. I now think we're going to make you know, double or triple again you know, over the next uh, five years and double or triple again over the next five years. I think there's 10 times more to go in, in Tesla before I have to even think about this, if, I'm, if we're right. I hope this has given you guys some insight into how a long-term investor with a good track record thinks. I'm in a similar situation to Ron. I don't have any interest in selling Tesla stock until we've at least 10X from here, which will be close to a $10,000 stock price. I've invested in such a way that I'm not gonna need that capital sooner. Maybe I'll access it, but that's not part of the plan at this point. So if any of you are curious if I'm selling Tesla stock anytime soon, the answer is hell fucking no. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget your free stocks with Weeble and Stake. Links in description. Tesla, that's going to be two or three thousand in five years, and you know multiple of that over in the next five years. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like to access exclusive videos, regular Q&As, behind the scenes content and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description and you can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching. So thanks again.